This is your WCFW Daily News Roundup for 105.7 CFW in Chippewa Falls and 93.5 The Tap in Eau Claire. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. A judge in Madison is striking down parts of Act 10, the state law that took away collective bargaining rights for most public workers. Dane County Judge Jacob Frost says parts of the law violate the constitutional right to equal protection because law enforcement was exempted. It's not clear exactly how yesterday's ruling will be applied. President Biden tells Civic Media's Earl Ingram he's fostered black representation at the highest levels of government. I picked a black woman to be my vice president. I've appointed the first black woman to be a Supreme Court justice. I've appointed more black judges, more black women judges than every other president in American history combined. Biden says Donald Trump would undo everything he's done for black Americans. I, I, I'm sorry to get so worked up, but he is just, he's done terrible things in the community, and he has about as much interest and concern for black and minority communities as the man in the moon does. Biden says he's appointed black leaders to high positions in government and fostered a boom in black-owned businesses. Biden campaigns in Madison tomorrow. The leader of the Universities of Wisconsin's second biggest school is stepping down. UW-Milwaukee Chancellor Mark Money says he plans to return to his faculty position in UWM's business school next spring. Money was chancellor for 10 years. The Coast Guard is closing two parts of the Mississippi River in western Wisconsin. The affected areas go from Whitman, Minnesota to Trempeleau, and then from La Crosse to the Quad Cities. The Coast Guard says the water is too high from recent rains to be safe for people or their boats. Public support is slipping a bit for new wind and solar energy projects, 75% compared to 80% according to the Pew Research Center. Advocates say people need to understand climate change is happening right now. We can point to the drought that affected our farmers last summer. And then in stark comparison, the intense rain and flooding events we've been experiencing this uh, spring and summer. Kieran Gallagher is with Clean Wisconsin. The cast of the classic TV sitcom Happy Days is coming to central Wisconsin. Henry Winkler, Anson Williams, and Donnie Most are set to appear at the Iowa Car Show next weekend. It's the 52nd year for the event that calls itself the biggest car show and swap meet in America. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Safety experts are stressing the importance of handling fireworks responsibly today. Joe Ullery reports. Fire Chief Trevor Hash warns against using illegal fireworks because of the dangers they pose. Injuries are less common now thanks to awareness, but there still will likely be injuries. They're not as common because of things like what you're doing right now. The awareness of you you don't want to go out there and touch the dud. You know, you want to have an adult set them off and have a big perimeter. Last year, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission reported around 10,000 fireworks related to injuries and eight fatalities in the nation. Hash reminds everyone that fireworks can easily ignite nearby structures, vegetation, and clothing, leading to severe burns, lacerations, and eye injuries. Keep children at least 100 feet away and never let them handle fireworks. I'm Joe Ullery. The Biden administration wants to increase tariffs on $18 billion worth of Chinese imports. Danielle Smith has more. Arthur Stamolis with the Trade Justice Education Fund says the tariff plan would safeguard better paying manufacturing jobs from unfair import competition. Uh, The type of imports that are being targeted are all too often made with sweatshop labor and even forced labor. And the tariffs are needed for U.S. manufacturers to be able to compete on a level playing field. Stimolis notes these tariffs aim to boost the number of producers and prevent monopolies, particularly in industries dominated by China. However, critics warn they could provoke retaliatory measures and harm international trade relations. Stimolis says his group hopes the administrative plan moves forward. I'm Danielle Smith. Advocates want the Department of Education to expand outreach efforts as debt collection on past due student loans resumes in September. Here's Alex Gonzalez. 
Tia Caldwell with New America is one of the authors of a new report that highlights more than 40 percent of low-income borrowers aren't aware of income-driven repayment plans. She says that's concerning. While the Biden administration has helped struggling borrowers through its saving on a valuable education plan, Caldwell says some still don't know about its benefits. Caldwell says the department should consider new outreach methods. The Department of Ed is just missing a whole chunk of people. And so we really heard from a variety of outreach experts that you need to reach people through multiple mediums. So we'd love to see more texting and creative ideas like push notifications, things like that, reaching borrowers where they actually are on their phones. Debt collection on defaulted loans will resume in September. I'm Alex Gonzalez reporting. And that's what you need to know. I'm Terry Bell, and this is Civic Media News. The Bucks at a free agent. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with Sports. The Bucks signed 30-year-old forward Torian Prince. Last year with the Lakers, the six foot five Prince averaged about nine points a game in 78 appearances. He played for Minnesota before that. Baseball, Brewers making a trade. They sent a prospect infielder, Gregory Barrios, to the Rays for a starting right-handed pitcher, 29-year-old Aaron Savale. Last night, the crew with a three to nothing win over the Rockies. The first shutout for Milwaukee at Coors Field since 2005. Christian Yelich with a home run named as a starter in the upcoming All-Star game along with catcher William Contreras. Colin Ray pitching seven innings in the shutout. Code Red. We call him Code Red. He was he was sensational and really efficient. I think he went more down and away fastball than he normally does and uh, you'd have to ask him but I don't think he threw as many cutters. Um. Yeah, it was a late night. That's manager Pat Murphy. They wrap up the four-game series tonight with Sports on Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. TikTok sensation Haley Welch, a.k.a. the Huck Tua girl, now has representation. It's about time. I still don't get the Huck part of the move. Seems kind of gross, but apparently some people think loogies are sexy. Welch signed with an agency called The Penthouse. Sounds about right. She is hoping to launch a career as a social media star after she showed the world how she does foreplay. Welch told the Plan Bree Uncut podcast she's grateful for the opportunity and says, I say something silly and my life has changed. Isn't God great? Country music star Zach Bryan is the latest to buy into the craze when he pulled Welch on stage during one of his concerts and she performed the move for the entire audience. We have so much to learn from Haley. When asked what her parents and family think, the Hawk Tua girl said, They know how I am because you never know what comes out of my mouth. Well, they do now, Haley. For what it's worth, that's the same sound someone makes when given the Heimlich maneuver. The 4th of July typically means a big weekend at the summer box office. This year should not disappoint. Opening this weekend is Disney Pixar's Despicable Me 4, which is expected to be the film that finally knocks off Inside Out 2 from the top spot. The most recent installment is pulling a not-quite-fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes, but the franchise has enough street cred with audiences to put the butts in the seats. Despicable Me 4 stars Steve Carell, Kristen Wiig, and Miranda Cosgrove. Another highly anticipated opening is Maxine a film about a young, aspiring actress in 1980s Hollywood that gets drawn into the world of adult films, all while a serial killer haunts the L.A. streets. If you want to watch a moving picture from the comfort of your own home, Eddie Murphy stars in Beverly Hills Cop, Axel F., which is now available to stream on Netflix. The film is receiving a fresh rating from Rotten Tomatoes and has some of the same old cast members, including Judge Reinhold and John Ashton, and has added a fresh face in Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Have fun at the movies. Matthew Perry had over $1.5 million in his personal bank account at the time of his death. People Magazine reports that the late actor wanted his items to be put in an account named the Alvy Singer Living Trust. Alvy Singer was the name of Woody Allen's character in Annie Hall. His full list of assets has not yet been disclosed. An investigation into Perry's death by the LAPD, DEA, and U.S. Postal Inspector is nearing a conclusion. There is nothing like being on a reality competition show as a celebrity contestant and then wanting nothing to do with it. Such is the case with Jason Mraz. He told Jesse Tyler Ferguson on his Dinners on Me podcast that he thought he would only be part of the show for two or three weeks before being voted off, but then realized he was one of the better dancers and would be there the entire time. He says he missed his cat so much he wanted out and started asking his friends not to vote for him. Despite this, he still made it to the final round. Not a fan of cats, but I admire the conviction. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Peach Waba. Weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. Partly cloudy with scattered showers and thunderstorms likely today, especially this afternoon. And there could be some heavy rain today into tonight, an inch to an inch and a half or more of rain possible through tomorrow. Our high today, 81. Tonight, 62. Tomorrow's high, 68. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Temperature now, 67. That's your WCFW and the TAP Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. 
Find more news at wcfw.fm or thetap.fm.